Hello and welcome to my channel. Very good to happy new year to all. And what we are going to do in new year that we are going to solve 2015 MSQ starting from 31 to 40 in one go. And with this, we can complete our five year target of 2015 to 2020. Uh, 2020 uh, all jam question and i will try to solve rest of the questions for 2021 as well as 2022 so without wasting any time let's start conference learning this is our first question related to economic geology a pirate charcoal pirate bearing copper ore body has undergone supergene enrichment choose the correct statement if you know the sequence of this um, supergene enrichment we have a succession starting from goes on leach zone oxidized zone enrich zone and primary zone we know that uh, what happened in goes on is pyrite had oxidized to form geothite and limonite so limonite is present in the goes on zone yes it do it it does present in the goes on zone so, so this is my correct option and you know that when the uh, in the formation of the secondary carbonate what used to be happen for the formation of the secondary carbonate, primary sulfide inter mineral generally are converted into sulfate. That sulfate is reacted with the uh, primary carbonates to form the secondary carbonates, like secondary carbon. Now we have a soluble salt and insoluble salt. So this insoluble insolub uh, salt is uh, just going down and insoluble salt rests there. And in uh, the example of the insoluble salt in terms of the what we call lead is angelsite and poly uh, uh, pyromorphite uh, what is really uh, what is the example for the co copper precipitate or insoluble uh, copper salt is like malachite azurite and cuprite and smithonite so in oxidized zone what we have as a lead as well as well as copper is uh, now malachite and cuprite uh, is the main mineral there so cuprite is present in the zone of oxidation yes it, uh, it is also present in the zone of oxidation as I told you too many times in my lecture that in zone of supergene enrichment we have copper uh, in terms of chalcopyrite and uh, covalite. So if if someone will ask you what is the uh, what uh, copper mineral I will identify in this uh, uh, supergene enrichment zone the first one is the chalcosite and second one is the covalite. So this is also my option and I already explained to you here that the malachite is present in the primary zone not in the primary zone it should it is it used to present in the oxidized zone so this option is the wrong one so in the succession from gosan in gosan we have geothite lemonite least zone the oxidized zone in oxidized zone we have malachite cuprite in terms of the co uh, copper precipitation then in the enrichment enrich zone I have chalcosite and coval uh, covalite and uh, malachite is not present in the primary zone so option is a b and c moving to the next question this is very simple question let's see how we are going to solve this the geochemical trend illustrated in the diagram for a suit of cogenetic and coeval igneous rock indicate cogenetic means the genetic are same for all the minerals form as well as coeval means the same age coeval means the same age at the same time at the, at the same age now you can see as my SI2 content increases, Al2 increases, whereas CaO and MgO decreases. Now, based on this chart, I have to identify whether olivine will crystallize, calcopresin will crystallize or not, plagioclase or alkaline will crystallize or not. So, what is the formula for olivine? Olivine is MgFe2 SiO4, clanprins MgCa SiO2 O6, like this one. Okay. In general, what is used to be happen now? You also have a formula for Mg2SiO4 for olivine. Also, if we don't have Fe2, MgSiO4 can also form. You know the form. What is the name of this mineral? Just comment in the comment box. Okay. Now uh, you can see uh, as the Si2 increases, MgO MgO decreases. This means olivine can form. For the uh, and now I have MgO or CO both in clinopyroxene. This means that as I2 increases, this can also form clinopyroxene. But why not? Why not plagioclase crystal? Uh, uh, I, uh, why I don't have the plagioclase as well as alkali feldspar crystal? You know why? Because you can see this as SI2 increases, Al2O3 is also increases. This means it is not consumed either by the plagioclase or the alkali feldspar. If it is not consuming, it is not diminishing, it, it, its strength is increases, 
it is not decreasing this means it is not consumed by any of the mineral is this means if it is not consuming that means uh, either the plagioclase or the uh, alkali feldspar is not forming in the or not crystallizing crystallizing in that one okay so this is the simple uh, simple funda that if you are making something that content should decrease the amount of uh, the uh, the concentration or the mole should decrease Uh, it consumed by that mineral to form that particular mineral in question so here you can see this al2 is not decreasing so so in that case plagioclase cannot be formed okay so my option should be a and b moving to the next question very simple question is there if you do remember what is uh, chronohistoriography or geochronology uh, it is very easy you can uh, differentiate this one now you can you know that Erythrum is related to era. System is related to period. So my option A is correct one. Series is related to epoch. So no stage. Is, stage is related to era. Stage is related to age. So this is not my option. Series is related to epoch. This is my option. And chronozone is related to age. This is not my option. So my uh, correct option is A and C. Moving to the next question. This is also very simple. And I thought. Uh, Uh, time to time, I used to tell you about this one. Which of the following statement relate to the depositional environment? You have to choose the depositional depositional environment for all these uh, 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 structure. Just like here, in the ground stratification is not related to glacial flow; it is related to your tidal effect, where we have the bi-directional flow. Dunes is characterized by the presence of fine grain at the top and coarse grain at the bottom. Not, not really. Uh, it is not always true. Okay, uh, so this statement is uh, not always correct. Drop stone is of glacial origin. Yes, drop stone is related to your glacial origin. And Bouma sequence indicate turbidite deposit. Yes, Bouma sequence uh, does indicate the turbidite deposit because it formed in the turbidite bed deposited by turbidity current. so this is turbidite deposit deposited by turbidity current at the bottom of the lake ocean and river this is from the uh, uh, are not edge guma okay so my option should be uh, c and d and same type of question they ask in the in year 2017 mcq type where you can see this match the sedimentary feature in group 1 with the corresponding sedimentary environment same thing they ask here also you can see this a burchan herring bone like this one little bit change are there so they are they they used to give you the same type of question means the concept uh, used to be the same but option a little bit changes are there if you know one option or one questions uh, logically uh, related to that questions or that type of question you can solve very easily so you have once so what you have to do remember once you are solving any question the concept related to that question behind that question should be clear to you okay moving to the next question this is related to the uh, paleontology where we need to identify what is invertebrate and what is uh, vertebrate vertebrate are those animals which has the okay uh, bones backbones and if we, if the animal don't have the backbones it will come in the category of invertebrate now we have four option Meg uh, megalodon, spondylus, stegodon, and teramastodon. You know this. This two belongs to the bivalvia, means namely branchia or pelecephalopoda uh, uh, class of the marine and freshwater mollusca, means bivalvia. You know the bivalvia is invertebrate. So my two option, megalodon and spondylus, will be my option. And you know the what is stegodon? Stegodon were believed to be the ancestor of the true elephant. True elephant. they are the ancestor of uh, ancestor of the true elephant and mammoth and uh, telemastodon is uh, is a is a mastodon which somehow come in the category of mammoth so this means it is also a type of uh, mammoth so uh, these two should have the vertebrate if they have the vertebrate this means they are not the invertebrate animals so my option should be a and b ah uh, now this is again the paleontology question which of the following trilobite has two or two to four thoracic segment and are eyeless means now i have to identify this genus related to trilobite which don't have eyes as well has not more than four thoracic segment so this means uh, we have divided the trilobite based on the thoracic structure as well as the eyes so some some don't have the eyes and some has eyes let's see which animal has the uh, and uh, now you know this 
agnostics is a small body hesophagus form eyes and facial features absent this means this is my option because it, it um, the agnostic doesn't have the eye okay and uh, if you talking about the age it is it belongs to lower cambrian to ordovician onelellus onelellus the the uh, the characteristic of the onelellus is that it has more than 45 uh, uh, segment thoracic segment so it has more than 25 thoracic segments so it uh, so this is not my option and calamine same thing happened with the calamine calamine also has uh, uh, more than four uh, uh, thoracic segments so it is also not an option and micro discus uh, uh, if you talk about the micro micro discus it has more or less two to four thoracic segments so this is my option and somehow uh, it is also or eyeless so my option uh, should be a and d moving to the next question which of the following formation was were deposited in the glacier and our fluvial environment now i have some formation which has been uh, uh, deposited either in the glacier or fluvial or in both so let's see if you if you refer to this ravin kumar's nasar book you will identify about the deposition environment based on that we will identify whether it is my correct option or not okay if you talk about the Subotu formation, Subotu formation belongs to the Subotu town of Shimla Hills. And the Shimla Hills, it is deposited in the marine transgression in the Paleogene time. So this is not my option. If I am talking about the Kareva formation, Kareva formation belongs to Kashmir Valley also. And it the formation consists of lacustrine and fluvial sediment. Okay intercalated with glacial till so this means it has fluvial as well as glacial till or this means it is glacial fluvial environment it deposited in the glacial fluvial environment this means this is my right option in this formation is very uh, uh, straightforward it is in the formation uh, belongs to the marine succession of red and green shells so this is not my option and blaney formation talking about the blaney formation if i explain a little bit more so it comes from the blaney tillites and you know tillites how tillites used to be uh, formed or deposited based on uh, in, in glacial environment. We have tillite in glacial environment. This means blaney tillite or blaney boulder bed a blaney formation belongs to glacial environment. So this is my option B and D. So moving to the next question. Uh, this is which of the following statement is are correct and uh, this uh, the first option is very straightforward Rajpura Dariba and in Rajasthan is a working late zinc deposit. Uh, Rajpura Dariba and Rampura Agucha. These two, uh, these two uh, uh, you can say underground mines belongs to Rajasthan and I, I have visited uh, one of them uh, during my MSc field work. Uh, it is a, uh, how you have to develop yourself in terms of the ore mineral deposit. Just refer to the NCRT book, please go to throw, go through NCRT books where you have a chapter related to related to oh, reservoir, reservoir and uh, uh, economic mineral of India or economic matters of India. So it will give you a, a good idea uh, when you are starting um, developing your understanding related to economic geology of in, uh, India. So ra the first option is the correct option. The Rajpura Dariba in Rajasthan is working for lead zinc deposit. If we are talking about the iron ore deposit uh, mine in you know, Mundi, Odisha, no, this is not the correct option. These are the option for the uh, uh, iron ore deposit in form of uh, BIF, uh, banded iron formation or like this one. So it is in Koenja, Sundargarh, Mayur, Banj, Katak and Korapur. And talking, so this is not my option. The largest copper mine in India is located in Malenj Khan, Madhya Pradesh. Yes, this is the correct option. This is some more or like GSR option uh, answer type of question not related to geology. It is more or like uh, your GS type of question and you should know that uh, where we have this copper uh, copper deposit more, uh, iron deposit more in, during your 8th, 9th and 10th standard where we have the geography uh, subject uh, as a subject. So uh, where we used to plot, okay, where we will find this magnes or deposit uh, just in, in, on this Indian map. So you have to you have to remember that if you if at that time you haven't studied this one, okay, try to cool down 
and start studying from the ncrt then move to the umeshwar prasad now the last question is magnesium deposit now see what is the trick related to this question understand something the option related to 1 to c here they ask for the uh, for they ask for the rajpura dariba in rajasthan means uh, the mines related to the area the mineral related to the area again the minerals related to the area now the minerals related to the formation so it will now this question uh, is going to hit me or i will find op uh, option or answer for this question in stratigraphy not in not in economic geology so i have to look for the mansar formation where is the mansar formation and where, whether the mansar formation has magnesium deposit or not so mansar formation belongs to the saucer group saucer group okay Uh, the classification of saucer groups is something like this one where we have the mansar formation and it uh, the dominant lithology for the mansar formation is muscovite sheet and muscovite biotite sit with magnesium ore zone it has magnesium ore zone this means this is my option a c and d moving to the next questions uh, which of the following stratigraphic uh, units are correctly match with their age and geographical location i have to match the formation with the age and the uh, and the environment of the where they have deposited let's see ninur formation belongs to kaveri and godavari basin in cenozoic rock in not in the cretaceous one so the age is not matching long formation belong to andaman yes long formation if you if you have the geology of the uh, andaman nicobar this is it is in a group in archaeologic group This is a long formation, and it belongs to middle to late Miocene, not Oligocene. So it is not my option again. Z1 formation. Talking about the Z1 formation, okay. This is my Z1 formation. It belongs to the Lidar Valley, Kashmir Basin. So in one term, it is something like Kashmir Lidar Valley. So this is okay. This is the question, and it belongs to Permian or not? This is middle to late Permian. This means it is the correct option C. now bandar group bandar group doesn't belongs to early protozoic if it is only protozoic this will be my answer but, but they mention it as a early protozoic but it belongs to the late protozoic so this is uh, this also is not my option now if you check the option from uh, from the gate uh, from the jam uh, official website perspective you will find a and c as two option but a uh, doesn't belongs to uh, cretaceous it belongs to cenozoic so this shouldn't be the option okay so option should be only one the c is will be the option so now moving to the next question next question is related to petroleum producing basins of india belongs to in general in general oils are found in rock ranging in age from precambrian to pliocene you can find oil in precambrian to pliocene but oil and gas is mostly localized in the rock of eocene age except kaveri basin and krishna godavari basin they are localized in cretaceous age why i mention only kaveri basin and krishna basin if you go to the director general of website you will find they have categorized the basin into category 1 category 2 category 3 so the category 1 has seven basin in that assam bombay offshore kambe kaveri krishna godavari trichopoli kachir and western rajasthan so we are producing we are getting petroleum in all these basins uh, that belongs to the age of eocene and cretaceous this means my option will be uh, cretaceous and tertiary okay why the co quaternary rock is uh, too immature to produce uh, petroleum or you can say hydrocarbon so that is excluded uh, uh, that is excluded from the option and in india we don't have any uh, any uh, basin which produce petroleum in the age of cambrian okay so the option will be b and c okay so with this we we wrap up 2015 M msq and we have already completed msq from 2015 uh, to no, 2020 and we i will try to solve the question starting from 2021 to 2020 as soon as possible so you will have all the set with you and try to finish your part also try to study as much as you can and be be clear with your concept and everything that will help you to achieve more in in your goal and best of luck for your exam thank you bye bye